Hey everybody, John Wagdon here with Dev Central. We're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video, and today we're going to talk about credential stuffing. And so, what is credential stuffing? How do we uh, how do we handle this and avoid it and all that stuff? So, credential stuffing, um, in a general sense, is where a hacker or an attacker bad guy has your credentials, and he takes those and he stuffs those into a web application to try to gain access to them. Um, and so you, you would maybe ask, well, hey, how did the bad guy get the, uh, get the credentials to begin with? So let's say you have, uh, I'll just draw a little picture up here. Let's say you have a, a username and a password combination, and you log into, I don't know, let's say you're a customer at Yahoo, like you have a Yahoo account, Yahoo. All right, well, if you uh, have read the news recently, Yahoo had a big attack and every single Yahoo account was compromised, every single one of them. So your username and password to gain access to Yahoo are now potentially compromised. Um, the problem with that, of course, is your Yahoo you know, account is now compromised and you need to maybe change your password, that kind of thing. The other problem is we as human beings tend to be, um, I won't call us lazy, but we tend to use our username and passwords over and over again. So not only at Yahoo do you use those, but maybe you use those same uh, credentials when you log into something like uh, you know, Facebook. So I'll put that over here. So what happens is, even though Facebook was never hacked, let's say, the fact that you use those same username and passwords in Facebook, the hacker is gonna say, I'm gonna try those, that username and password that I got out of Yahoo and I'm gonna stuff those into Facebook, let's say, um, or any number of web applications out there. So that is the, that's the essence behind credential stuffing. It's where the, the hacker takes your credentials and stuffs them into several other popular web applications in order to gain access to those as well. All right, so that's the problem. How do we fix this thing? A uh, couple of different things you can do. One, um, you can implement, if you have a, a web application, you know, here's the, here's the internet out here, you've got, you know, users that come into your, to your web app here. Uh, you can put a web application firewall in front of that. So I'll just put a WAF. Uh, specifically for F5, our web application firewall is the Application Security Manager or the ASM. And it can do things like, um, it can do proactive bot defense. So I'll say proactive bot defense. The reason that this is interesting is uh, whenever the attackers take your username and password and, and stuff them into these other applications, uh, then they typically do that in a very fast manner where it's like, hey, we're just gonna start chunking these things in, you know, over and over. And it's an, it's an automated thing that they use, you know, they'll write a script or whatever. And so there are certain, you know, features or, or patterns that are used where our proactive bot defense and our ASM can, can pick those up. Like, hey, this, you know, this one user has tried different credentials you know, 50 times in like one minute or something like that, where it's like, hey, this is not normal human behavior. So that can help defend against that. Um, there are, our ASM has just different attack signatures that can look at this. There's CAPTCHA uh, per, you know, protection that it can offer. So all of those things. So a web application firewall um, can help with those things. So you put that in front of your web application and it helps protect. The other thing that I was gonna mention and one of the other solutions that a lot of people use is uh, token-based authentication. So I'll put, I'll just put token up here. So if you have token authentication, so I'll put token auth, all right? The idea with this is that rather than using a username and password for every single uh, web application, you use what's called a token to access or authenticate to that web application. Um, so if you have, uh, a client out here in the internet and they need to access, uh, let's say, I don't know, let's say they're going to Spotify. You're going to Spotify. Another one that uses uh, this is Pinterest. My wife uses that, not me, of course. Um, but one thing that, that these things offer you, or, or one, one thing that the uh, web application for Spotify or say Pinterest allows you to do is log in using your Facebook credentials. So let's say you have Facebook out here so Facebook, you authenticate to Facebook with your username and password, but in order to get to Spotify, you can log in using your Facebook credentials. So you don't have to re-log in to Spotify, you have already authenticated to Facebook, and then Spotify trusts the authentication token that Facebook would provide, 
And so then that, that uh, tries to handle the, uh, you know, the, the authentication problem a little bit that way. One, one feature of a token-based authentication is that the token itself is very short-lived, and so it has a short lifespan. So if someone were to steal that token that was sent from Facebook, say, to Spotify, then they would only be able to use it for a very short period of time. Also, if they were to steal that token from Facebook to Spotify, they could not use that to get into Pinterest. Um, so, it's, uh, so it helps out, it reduces the footprint or the, the threat um, you know, space uh, for hackers to, to try to get in all these other places. Another kind of conceptual idea that, uh, that, that some people try to use is this idea of, a, uh, of an authentication gateway. So I'll put auth gateway right here. And there are various ways to actually implement this, but an authentication gateway is essentially a place for, you know, if you have clients out here in the internet, then they would authenticate into this authentication gateway. And then this authentication gateway would then hand out tokens to, you know, the various web applications that are on the back end. So here's your web app over here, web app. And so as clients authenticate to the authentication gateway, the tokens are handed out from that gateway. Now, one thing that this has to, this has to be um, um, capable of handing out tokens, of course, a, a couple of different things that you can use are like SAML or OAuth, uh, those types of things in order to pass these tokens around uh, to the web applications. So again, with credential stuffing, you have the problem of usernames and passwords used on various different web applications. Um, the solution would be not only a web application firewall, which I think is a good idea anyway, but also moving to token-based authentication uh, where these uh, short-lived tokens are used uh, to access your web applications. So that's how you can help kind of get around the, uh, the credential stuffing problem. Another thing you can do is uh, educate your users and say, hey, stop using the same username and password on all your different web applications that you have to access. So that's another, uh, another thing you can keep in mind as well. So uh, credential stuffing's a, a problem out there today. There's a few different ways to, to solve it or to help you know, mitigate this, uh, this risk. Um, so uh, we'll link to some, some more uh, uh, articles and solutions maybe at the bottom of this video as well. But, but that gives you an idea of the, of the problem and a couple of different ways to, to solve it. So thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video and we will see you guys out there in the community.